that thing that we did. Oh before. yeah. <laughs> Shit, right, we'll start again. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Gav is going to drive the episode and... Oh, I do whatever you have to do, don't worry. Yeah, you don't no. need to do it, um, you don't need to record it in here. No, 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 we, no. Have, we have our Zoom, we have, we have the it's iPad as well. Yeah. Oh, may, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Good this is further than we got last time. So yeah, yeah, exactly, like I'm not going to make, tough to be here, make like, any already. requests yeah, or anything like that. I, don't, I was just saying to the lads when we walked in, like, I don't think I'm ever going to get used to this, like, rambling into mm. RT like yeah, the Greg, canteen and Greg said like, he's not going to be used to just walking around RT I said you will when you work here uh, you missed uh, who, when I was getting a cup of coffee there see Tubbery yeah, yeah so. the uh, so so thing thing is, is, the black hair I was talking to yeah mm. well you wouldn't uh, well, you, it was Jerry Ryan's daughter Lottie Ryan oh, oh, oh very very good, she yeah. didn't even recognise yeah. yeah. Um, yeah no the, the lads because we ran into well we didn't run into him he walked past us the last time we were here Ryan Tubbery and the lads had to stop me from going out. We after were a bit him. too starstruck. We were only in the door like five minutes. Yeah. Starstruck. Totally. <laughs> you guys need to get out, man. <laughs> uh, we'll get used to it anyway. Yeah, we'll get used um, to it. Right. Um, but then, in case you don't know, this is in conversation with. Um, I'm the host, Gavin Kelly, today. And I'm with my co host, Colin. All right, yeah. And Greg Mulholland. Hey, lads. So um, we're with a uh, renowned DJ, uh, Dave Fanning. Dave, how are you? Oh, yeah. hey, uh, big round of applause. The, the live studio so we audience. Have, we have the soundboard for that for Apple. Yeah, yeah. The, the live studio good. audience is a bit quiet today. Yeah, that's fine. No but um, Dave, how are you? You just you just finished interviewing Sting. Tell us about that. I did. Yeah. Um, well, Sting is um, a bit of a Renaissance man. He's done so many different things down through the years, and he's always trying to do something different. And a lot of people find him very pretentious, and I can <laughs> see what they mean in some ways. But you know what the hell? He doesn't care about what yeah. people think. And, and he said what? he was the biggest. They were the biggest rock pop band of the first five years of the 80s or thereabouts and yeah. they conquered the world he made his trillions and I've never met a trillionaire I didn't like so he's fine yeah exactly <laughs> I'd say you're as qualified a man to call somebody one of the greatest rock stars anyway given your well, illustrious yeah, well, career well, 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 when I say one of the greatest rock stars doesn't mean that he's in my top 50 yeah, yeah. well that's you're fine really, yeah you know, you're, you're very well him, documented top 50 him, yeah. all the luck um, were you listening to music on the way in here Dave or uh, no, I was listening to the radio. Yeah. Listen to the radio on the way in. Now, would you typically um, listen to RTE as well, or would you would you venture off? To be honest, I'd much rather listen to music on the radio, but there's something wrong with the way I do my phone, and I've got to go, go back to getting an iPod mm. and putting stuff onto that, and I'd much rather listen to music because I've listened to so much radio in the last year or two, and my thing has been broken all that time, and I'm fed up listening to the radio. <laughs> there's one yeah. more referendum I'm not listening to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, th- I think we're safe on that oh, one. Exactly. It's, it's, it's gone now, so we're, we're all yeah, good. There'll be more. Yeah. So um, we're going to, to start off. We're going to take you back, Dave. So you started on pirate radio. I did back in the yeah. late seventies. Yeah. How did you get into that? Um, there was uh, <clears throat> I was doing uh, I I had done a BA and a HDIP in UCD. So I was B, I was a teacher at the time for a year, and everybody knew that all I wanted to do was something to do with music. There was an ad in the paper for Scene Magazine editor wanted. Scene Magazine was a magazine I used to buy. That's because all the people involved in Scene Magazine went off to form a new magazine called Hot Press and they left the name Scene behind. And so I went in, got the job immediately because nobody else applied for it. It was the oddest thing. But four of my friends, including my mother, said, have you seen this ad in the back of the Irish Times? So I went in and got the job. I had no idea how to do anything like that. I worked with one other guy who had a bit more of an idea. And anyway, between the jigs and the reels, we did a thing on uh, pirate radio on one of them. And this was my kind of in. And I started working on pirate radio. And there wasn't one person listening. There was nobody listening when we did it in 77. Not one person. Mm. But then we were raided. And suddenly we were... Yeah, as the, the, yeah the famous raids. Yeah, we actually, because uh, are the three of us, we do communications. One of the part of uh, our course was studying um, media history. And oh, yeah. we, we learned all about pirate radio and that they, they used to do the raids and stuff like that. Yeah. But all you had to do to avoid getting caught was take one little piece of equipment away and they couldn't bust you for doing Well, uh, there was an awful lot of things went on in those few years. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one station I worked for, it was in uh, off O'Connell Street, but actually it was, we, we moved up to Stevens Green and the guy who owned the thing came along and said, at two in the morning, I was going, what's he doing? Because I was on very late at night. Brought us up to his apartment and that. And you're supposed to play a late night tape uh, like that keeps going yeah. since 8 in the morning and uh, he couldn't hear the tape on his radio and he said Ash it doesn't matter next day the whole place had burnt down <laughs> <laughs> and four days later we were in a new venue with the exact same equipment <laughs> fair enough yeah. so actually I jumped, on a bit. I jumped straight into the interview but we usually start with our uh, get to know you quiz that Greg likes to uh, introduce us with get to so, know me quiz yeah do I know myself like? it's a few mm-hmm. little questions just we're to get to know you guys. So, uh, so Greg is going to fire away there now so this one's already answered same with Joe Duffy yeah uh, it was exactly the same on that one Tea or coffee? Um, both. 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 Yeah, I take coffee in the morning. Oh yeah. God, look, it's a quarter past twelve. Damn. Uh, I take <laughs> coffee in the morning, and 
I would always take tea later on. Right. Yeah. And, and I take a lot of it. A lot of tea. An awful lot. Of sugar? Both. Yeah, one small tiny bit of sugar. I used right. to be a bit more, but yeah, I don't. I can. I'd, if you gave me a cup now without any, I no problem. Mm. Green tea or matcha tea? Uh, no, of just these? a cup of tea. Just yeah. Yeah. Barry's or Irish. Barry's or Lines. Uh, Barry's or Lines. Barry's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing you can't live without. One thing I can't live without. Or, um, one thing I can't live without is, uh, believe it or not. Uh, a laptop not because of anything that I want but because it's a monitor and I can watch movies on it oh, I spend a lot of time watching box sets yeah. and movies and they're all on the laptop mm, yeah, Joe Duffy did. said his iPad his iPad, his yeah. His iPad yeah. yeah but that's probably for very important reasons uh, <laughs> but he said he used it to listen to the radio actually he said that oh, yeah. he was quite an avid radio listener so that's what he used it for but yeah I mean, yeah, no, I'd like to listen to a lot less radio I've had enough in the last few <laughs> yeah, years I'm going to fix these things and listen to them <laughs> what did 12 year old Dave Fanning want to be when he grew up Without a doubt, what he became, no question. And we're the ultimate fan. I'm the youngest of six, and they're like, I got every piece of music imaginable from all my older brothers and my sister, particularly the older brothers, and movies and all that kind of thing. And that's all I ever wanted to do. There was no way of ever being able to do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there was no mechanism to do it. But I mean, I just got completely 100% lucky. Right time, right place, with pirate radio, which nobody knew what it was. Anything like that, just exactly. the formation of two FM. As yeah, well, just yeah, and then two years later, the formation of two yeah. FM. It just couldn't have been luckier, and like it has to be. Like the biggest bands in the world, eighty percent of what they get is luck, you know, because some of the greatest bands I've ever heard sold five albums. And would you consider YouTube being your first live session in two FM a strike of luck? Well, 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 well you, um, not really. It's not as though the it's not as though the very fact that you two were the first session we ever did is something that means anything to us mm -hmm. now in some ways it's just like the, the band I played most of Irish bands on Pirate Radio was U2 but one of the reasons for that was because they were the band in that time that had about three different demo tapes as opposed to two or one mm -hmm. so I always just played them it's not like I thought they were the greatest thing ever because I didn't um, and then when we came in here myself and Ian Wilson realised if we're going to get sessions going we might as well do the band that I've just played mostly on Pirates U2 mm -hmm. who by the way like most likely would have broken up within two months most bands didn't last till Christmas you know we never thought they'd get past the bag of the end. Well, they've gotten they've got far enough. <laughs> yeah, I think they're doing pretty well yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a role model or greatest influence on your career? Well, my mother. Okay. On that level, or do you mean somebody famous? Uh, either or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, my mother. She was a good pusher. She, 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 she Always encouraged you in what yeah, you did? Yeah, exactly. Always. Was yeah. there ever a bit of, you're not going to get a job out of that, you're not going to... Yeah, there was a bit of that from right across the board. But I mean, like, I was qualified. Like, I did do my thing. Yeah, you had college, your degrees and I had, and I had my teaching thing, yeah. I didn't particularly want to keep teaching. I wasn't against teaching, but God, I wouldn't have been. And what, it was English and philosophy is what you would have It was English philosophy in UCD, yeah. yeah, and then English in school I was teaching, yeah, a bit of geography, I don't know how that happened. Like are, you very, are you a very <laughs> philosophical man? No, I am not. Most Did you enjoy philosophy? Not, not particularly, because I always found in UCD, they kind of teach you philosophers more than they teach you philosophy, okay. but that's me being annoying, that's me being a little brat, okay. like giving out about the department, you know, which is stupid, I shouldn't do that at all, really, you know. It's trying to be smart assed really. <laughs> um... So you've obviously interviewed just about every big name across, you know, uh, radio and film. Yeah. But is there anyone that's evaded your mic over the year? Yeah, well, I mean, the, like, the few people, I, I would have liked to have interviewed Michael Jackson because yeah, I yeah. think he's kind of not of this world. Mm. He's kind of like... Somebody, yeah, no, he's kind of like, a, he's like from a different planet mm. and on that level. And then I saw him on that documentary on TV and I kind of liked him in some ways. I thought he was a bit of a child though in another way. Kind of just odd. He would have been interesting to interview. But I suppose, like, yeah, somebody, somebody like Howard Hughes would be the same thing. Mm. Like, he's just from a different planet. Say so it'd be a challenging interview. Yeah. Like, out of the people, like, obviously you've interviewed so many people, what would have been one of the most challenging that you've ever experienced? You see, it depends on how you define challenging. Like, Dif some difficult to get stuff out of her. Well, I remember, a funny, the funny thing is now, there's somebody who I knew and liked, knew her husband, and I interviewed her then, and it just didn't really work. And was that challenging? That's uh, Kirsty McCall. Okay, um, yeah. You know, things that like fairy tale in New York. Course, she was yeah. married mm. to Steve Lillywhite, who was producing you two. But um, I know, I mean, like, I've had run ins with people now yeah. and again, once or twice, not trying to. And they're often the better interview. Like, they Keanu Reeves once, and he started getting on to me about this thing. Well, what, 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 what if this? What if that? And it was great. It was much better to have that kind of animation. Um, I had a thing with Ice Cube, or was it Ice T? I can't remember which one. <laughs> we started using band language to each other, but that was fine, because he was recorded interview, so I could take it out if I had yeah. to. We used to sell these programs around the world. And um, my greatest hero of the last 30 years, the first time I interviewed him was in here, actually. And he leaned across the thing and said, who the fuck told you that? And got on to me like that. Because I said, like, you know, you were in rehab for drugs and all this for years. And uh, he said, geez, it says it here in your press release. Does it? <laughs> in fact, I'm going to see him tonight and tomorrow night. And that's Nick Cave. 
Very good, yeah, Nick. Yeah, very it's good. one of my all-time favorites. So, a song that grinds your gears. Uh, well, well, if I if I, if I if I had to sing as a kind of a desert island song, it'd be Strawberry Fields Forever by the Beatles. It would have to oh, be. Yes. I think. Very I can think, of a, yeah. I can think of a million others, but I mean. And yeah. then, like a song that you do, you don't like, like if you hear it, you turn it off immediately, or try to at least. No, I have to watch what I say here because I wouldn't be a great fan of an awful lot of stuff that's going on at the moment of Irish bands. Um, uh, we, we can fix it in post if you know. Anyways, uh, um, oh, where's the crack in the ice? <laughs> well, I mean, there'll be like there'll be obviously this music I don't like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Is there any just like popular song that's constantly on the radio that's just kind of? Oh yeah, well that happens all the time. All the time. Yeah. I mean, just all the time, you know. God, I'm like, what do you want? The mm-hmm. Macarena, whatever. I mean, you know, I could do. I don't know. There's loads of them. too many. Yeah. Uh, so an ideal weekend, all things going to plan. You completely dictate everything. Oh, Weather. Yeah. An ideal weekend. Um, I, we, I'm a bit sad about that kind of thing in some ways in that uh, when I go abroad with the whole family, just the three kids and myself and the wife, that's what I like more than anything. I don't care where it is. Any destination? We've, well, it's funny, we've done that lately a few times because I have a daughter who's 14 and she is obsessed with music. I mean, just to the point where it's ridiculous. So we actually went to Milan about four months ago. And then we went to Amsterdam two months before that to see the same artist. And don't don't try and pretend you're going to say, oh yeah, I know this person. You don't. And like, I don't either. She's a 15-year-old from Los Angeles called Billie Eilish. No, and no, 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 I wouldn't have a notion. <laughs> have a notion. <laughs> and she's obsessed with her. And then because of that, I mean, I know it sounds like I just uh, spoil her, bring her everywhere, but it's not really like that. Um, we went to, uh, she's very much into One Direction. And in particular, she's into uh, Harry Styles. So we went to see him at the three arena, and she just yeah, was there myself. Yeah. And he was great. Yeah, he was very good. Yeah, he was very was good. Brilliant. Alert, so yeah, we're going yeah. to see him again in two weeks' time in Washington DC. Lovely. So, yeah, hey. you know, whatever. Uh, bring earplugs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's loud. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a beverage of choice. Now, alcoholic is kind of what we're yeah. The, you what see, we're a beverage of choice. People talk about you know, like all the ads are always for alcohol for the for great taste. Taste isn't my thing. It's a, it's more of a, a thing. This sounds like us and Dicey's getting like four yeah. year yeah. bombs. It's not yeah. about the taste of it. No, yeah. no, taste, no, but I mean, like, yeah. I don't particularly drink alcohol for the taste. I drink it for the hit. But having said that, I also drink it for the conviviality. Like, I like sitting in a bar with one bloke and having a pint of Guinness in front of me, mm. and then right. another Five pint points. of Guinness, and another pint of Guinness. Yeah. That's what I like to do. Now, but is it the taste? I, I don't. Or is it the social aspect? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't drink wine. I haven't had a glass of wine in forty years because I just don't like it. So if I have a meal, I drink milk, and people go, "What?" I'm an uneducated palate, maybe. I don't care. I don't know. I just whatever. I don't taste. Isn't my thing. But I, even food doesn't really do it for me. I don't really care. So if you were to walk into Donahue's now and you were to order, oh, I'd have a pint of Guinness. Pint of Guinness. Pint of Guinness. Jeez, couldn't get a pint of anything else. Donahue's. <laughs> Donahue's is only for Guinness. Uh, three guests, living or dead, you'd invite to a dinner party. Um, three guests living or dead I'd invite to a dinner party my god I mean anybody and everybody um, god you could, I mean I don't know David Byrne from Talking Heads uh, would be one because uh, he's a fascinating bloke uh, let me think uh, John Lennon because I've never met him yeah, so I wouldn't, very I wouldn't mind him You know, he'd, he'd be one of my one that got away kind of thing and uh, I don't know I mean I mean, I could easily say Bono because he's ten times more interesting than people actually think he is. Uh, but no, let me think. I don't know. I mean, Joni Mitchell, maybe. Okay. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, finally, walk, cycle, bus, or drive? I shouldn't. I drive all the time. Drive all the time. Yeah, I do a bit of walking now and again because I have a dog. Oh, yes. But I don't cycle and I don't... Uh, You're not a gym goer. Bus. I'm but not you, do, you do walk the dog. Yeah, I walk the dog for the dog's sake. Mm. Do you live... Do you, like, obviously, you grew up my in and memory. around this area, do, yeah. you, do you live far from Artina? No, funny enough, like I grew up uh, all my life. I stayed at home until I was 30. Proud of it, I can tell you. I wish I'd stayed longer. See, everybody else was gone. And uh, I was like uh, a mile from National School, the next National School. Blackrock College was a mile down the road and UCD was 10 yards across the road and RT was 500 yards down the road. So you couldn't... You just had it made for you, yeah. Yeah. you couldn't make it up. I mean, it's ridiculous. It was... If somebody just painted yeah. the perfect yeah. radio career, it was just you there. I know, and away. Right there, like. uh, I live further away. I live about a mile away. <laughs> oh, yeah. geez, yeah. Hard, hard times. Yeah. Right, well, that was to get to know you, yeah. Chris. I think, I think we accomplished our goal there. I think yeah, we, we got to know you a little bit better. Uh, so, Dave, when you were saying there you grew up and you're... And music all over the place. Yeah. So what was big really time. just you know the big artists and the big songs that really 
find well the stuff up. that was there I mean like my brother would be would have been into jazz Thelonious Monk and all that kind of thing um, I was kind of I'm old enough to be a slight veteran of what was supposed to be the Cliff Richard Elvis Presley Wars before the Beatles right. I joined the Beatles fan club at the age of 6 or 7 when they started and uh, I was in their fan club all the way and the fan club is a way of keeping in touch with getting stuff free and all that. Mm. like there was no any social media you couldn't find have you ever out. have you ever met any of them yeah I've interviewed Paul twice and I've interviewed Ringo once I've Very never much. met George never met John no uh, and I never will now um, but uh, yeah and like there was a lot of music in the house but uh, my older brother Peter was the one who had really good stuff like uh, he had box sets of Woody Guthrie the guy who who, um, who uh, influenced Bob Dylan and right. then we had Bob Dylan yeah. and oh, then Dylan we had, was actually oh, in your right. brother's class in Black Rock wasn't no, it no Bob, Bob oh, Geldof Bob Geldof yeah. sorry yeah. yeah he was yeah he was in my brother's class in Black Rock yeah, yeah two years in front of me hmm. and yeah. for films what'd you grow up with well, films was huge in our house. Again, my brother Peter, but and my brother Jared, those two in particular, like huge into music and huge into movies. And from the age of four, I was going to every single movie I could possibly go to, and mm-hmm. still do. Um, I mean, I'd have favourites like in the sixties, Psycho; in the seventies, Nashville; in the nineties, Secrets and Lies. I'm sure I can think of another four or five. Yeah, like if you were to pick, like over the years, if you were to pick one film that at any moment you could drop everything and just stick it on, and you'd be. Contentious. I suppose Nashville will be the movie Robert yeah. Altman from 1975 only because uh, it meant so much to me at the time there's very few movies I've seen double figure times so I've seen that over ten times and it doesn't necessarily hold up now and people don't necessarily get it because it wasn't um, a slag it wasn't like a Saturday Night Live sketch about the town of Nashville and country music it was actually a homage to it. It was actually a love letter to mm. it. But a lot of people don't necessarily see that. There's nobody in the movie that takes over. There's 24 people who get exactly the same amount of screen time. Mm. And uh, it's mm, just a day in the life or two days in the life of Nashville where a singer comes in to sing and she gets sick and has to go to hospital. And there's a political rally going on around it at mm. the same time. But it's such a little microcosmic two hours of what America was celebrating 200 years of American independence, 75 yeah. Just brilliant. Very, very good. It's kind of, it's almost like a documentary. Very good, you're saying there. Um, and any guilty pleasures that you watch now and be like, you wouldn't really admit that you'd, you'd love? Watching and listening, I would have certain, like, I mean, in terms of listening, like, I mean, I actually quite like Coldplay, but I mean, everything mm. tells me I shouldn't. Yeah. It's not my thing. <laughs> well, yeah, I think, but, I think social media tells you that you shouldn't <laughs> yeah, a lot of the time. I quite like them, you know, in some way. I think that they also write good songs, but I mean, I don't know what that even means. What does it mean, quite like them mean? Uh, movies, uh, God, I can't think off the top of my head of anything that I kind of shouldn't like, but mm. do. Marley and Me is mine. Uh, Marry me, me. Yeah, I've that's never, never seen it. It's not about the dog. I'd say, you know, um, I'd say Mean Girls for me is it's, well, that, yeah, it's all that, right, like, but that's we're, pretty we're cool. Have to edit this out, yeah, right? probably, we're yeah, probably going to be hung drawn and quarter now after that. Because since we're going to edit it, Marty and me makes me cry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's totally I'm not editing that bit out, yeah. sorry. <laughs> that's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, yeah, so we were talking there where you started off in Pirate Radio and then obviously you moved to the legitimate RTE. Yeah. So what was your what was your move into RTE like? Well, I mean, th- that happened when, when 2FM started mm. and uh, you know, nobody knew what was going on, you know, and it was just good fun. But like we were also like throughout the 80s, we were the um, official pop music station of the country and there yeah. was so little for other people to do. That, like we'd be on at night, I'd be on 8 to 10, Jerry Ryan would be 10 to 12, Cagney would be 12 to 2 and like so many people would be listening to us, not because we were any good. But because there was nothing else nothing to do, else there to really wasn't, to. and there was none of this going on—no mobile phones and none of this and none of anything—and there weren't three televisions in every house. There was one, so the parents were always inside watching the equivalent of Today Tonight or Prime Time or whatever. Mm. And you know, everybody else was listening to us doing their homework on that, you know. And also, people stayed up later years ago than they do now. Yeah. People just even students go to bed much earlier now than they used to. There was always way past yeah, one o'clock, two o'clock, to. three o'clock. It's the way it is, you know. I don't know if you I don't know if you can tell, but Greg is a little bit older than ourselves. So he no, needs a, he needs know. a sleep. See, I'm actually He's a mature student, Dave. Would really? you leave? I need my sleep. I'll tell you, I love sleeping. Yeah, I, I mean, similar age bracket, I'd say. Is it? I slept all day yesterday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's not a bad thing to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then of course you just actually mentioned uh, Jerry Ryan there, obviously the late and great. Uh, how did your friendship come about? Was it just true working here? Uh, as well no, as well? I was working in Pirate. We were working in Big in D together. I didn't know him in Trinity, and I was in UCD. And we were, I suppose, frankly, we were the only ones in Pirate who'd actually gone to university, and that might have been a bit of a connection. I've no idea. Yeah. Uh, and I met him in what do you call that street up off Ocon Street that we were in? Up there, anyway. Abbey? Yeah, somewhere around there, yeah. yeah. And uh, that was a great place to work. Chapel Lane was the actual name of the street. I really liked it. And I had great fun up there. Now, I wasn't working with Jerry much there. He was on 
either wasn't on or was on at the weekends and whatever. But that's where I met him and would have got yeah. to know him there, yeah. Very good. Greg? Yeah. And first. Yeah. yeah. So obviously there's not much you haven't done, Dave. Like across for us as as aspiring communication. Oh yeah, I mean like like I mean there's a lot of people would think that um, you know, I've got a great job or I'm really lucky you've no idea how lucky I am you've no idea how great it is like it's brought me around the world like Empire Magazine had a thing in the year 2000 was it or 2001 of the 100 most influential people in Hollywood mm -hmm. and I would have one on one interviews with 92 of those with three camera shooters coming just the two of us talking I'd have like breakfast with Anthony Hopkins or Tom Hanks Tom Cruise all that kind of thing it's just well, now hold on they're not great interviews because they're just junkets where you just win mm. and go out yeah. you get your 15 minutes and you're gone mm. the rock ones could be all day or could be a couple of hours so it's brought me all around the world to all different places I mean it's like kind of a, like next Monday I'm going to New York to see you two playing a small gig in uh, the Apollo the famous Apollo mm -hmm. Theatre then I come home and then I go back to Washington to see Harry Styles. Harry Styles. And then Some commute ice. That's, that's a stark <laughs> contrast. Now. Then yeah. four days later, it's you two in Madison Square Garden. So we stay for that. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So like, I mean, like, I mean, the movie thing has brought me to LA once a year or twice a year doing the movie show for about twelve years, and to New York six times that year, and to New Orleans and anywhere else, and Germany and whatever. like you go to uh, the oddest things, and it's all just to do interviews because I had a program on TV mm -hmm. that again it was the time when it was the nineties when people didn't have all these distractions mm -hmm. they actually watched television for better or worse yeah well yeah for well, maybe from my point of view it, it was brilliant you know so like I mean you think it's good whatever it's absolutely fucking great I mean I went to Ethiopia I went to and Cambodia uh, I think, Cambodia yeah. and all these places like for because they said look if we get Dave Fanning to do it stupidly they thought it might mean something so you spent two weeks there doing interviewing warlords who are now trying to go for democratic elections and last week they were killing people it's bizarre like it's absolutely bizarre yeah. everything is timing it's not that I'm any good it's not that anybody else is any good it's just luck and That's is there anything on like obviously you you really have done it like for most as media students mm. oh yeah you've literally ticked every box absolutely and there's no question about it except one thing and that is that I want to keep doing this and I'm having a bit of struggle in order to here getting a few of the things I want to do mm -hmm. uh, it's not giving me sleepless nights but I would like to be doing more and I think I should be doing more and I think the bosses are wrong they should be giving me more but I've been saying that for five or six years to everybody who listens. But I, I'm sure there's plenty of doors open across the pond even. I wouldn't be well I mean I did across the pond for a bunch of years mm. between 90 and 94 I did I uh, did there was the only rock program on TV was they weren't very good but anyway it doesn't matter the point of it is they were and they were live uh, was Channel 4 and I did two three series all together with them with another guy and then we got another presenter because the first guy was useless and uh, <laughs> but we had like it was amazing memories of going all around England and doing live television and uh, mad stuff like I mean walking down the street in Boston at 3 in the afternoon but it's 11 o'clock in London or whatever I'm pouring around London and, pouring, and here I am blah 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 in Boston and you walk into a club and one of my favourites JJ Cale was playing and he starts his thing or doing the Albert Hall with Eric Clapton kind of thing and I walk down in front of everybody and then I, he can't start playing until I've said what I'm saying it's fucking mad carry on <laughs> like all that stuff because like, I mean and I had lied to Channel 4 and said I had done loads of live TV I had never done one minute of live TV <laughs> Well, I had done loads of TV. That's what you do with media, isn't it? You just blag your way to the top. It really is. It just opens any door. And you always say yes to everything because you never know where yeah. it might lead. Mm. And that could be the only bread and butter you're getting then as well, you know? We tell everybody that we passed that we're just new employees here, don't yeah. we? Just yeah, yeah. Well. exactly. 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 I'll print us off some name yeah. badges. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Asher eventually will get a job mm. here at Grand. Uh, but just get Dave to get us a job now. I'm glad you're yeah. confident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need yeah. to have confidence in this game. Yeah. Sure. What are you going to say there? Our host column here is a big Oasis fan yeah, here, man. Dave. Um, and you've interviewed the two brothers yeah. two times. Who's your favourite? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, obviously, I prefer Noel because I find Liam just a pain. He's easier actor, to talk to, I'd say. He's certainly easier to talk to, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I want to see. Well, I, I did see Noel there uh, three weeks ago. Yeah, so in that, um, Tree Arena, obviously. And yeah. then Liam's come to Malahide Castle there Friday yeah. week, so I'll be going to see him as well. I don't think I'll go to that. Yeah. Mm. I, I know I'm not. A, I'm not a great Oasis fan, and um, <laughs> not many like, people are. <laughs> yeah, 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 I got a lot of slagging about it. And Noel as well. Yeah, like, I mean, wipe the tears. They're good at what they do, baby. But like, I thought the gig was very stodgy. You know, it's just all Noel's, these, it's just a noise. Yeah, a yeah exactly. Noise. And like uh, some of, some of the songs that he picked just weren't great live songs. Like no. um, Fort Knox is just like, not just a song stuff. that you're going to play. No, I mean, the Mighty Eye and stuff. Oh, great! We know this one kind of thing. No, I mean, I do. I think I'm, I'm delighted for, for what they are and when they come yeah. back to do Glastonbury for the billion dollar tour in three years time or whatever Can't it'll be, wait. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be, be there, definitely, yeah. I don't really care it's just not yeah. my music really you know Actually, I mean they're a good enough. bar band they're, they're yeah. very of a time of the 90s 
Yeah, they yeah. Ca- they capture an era, if, if anything. Yeah, but even at the time, they didn't interest me as much as, say, Blur did or something. Yeah, Blur okay, would be yeah, yeah. more interesting music. Yeah, made. because they, 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 each album they made was better all the time. Mm. Whereas Oasis, Oasis went the other way. Yeah, they kind of did, really, you know. I've no yeah, I, I, like, I, I'll admit that now. Like they, they started off on a high, kind like, plateaued with yeah. What's the Story, Morning Glory, and yeah. then it was just kind of slowly downhill from there. I do like their solo stuff, though, I have to say. I think Li- Liam's, uh, no, Liam's no, album. Stuff. Mm. No? No, As I mean, you were, it took me by surprise, like yeah, especially considering people writing his songs, and it just yeah. it just yeah. means nothing. To well, me. he sings them well. To be sure. Like considering like how much of a train wreck really BDI were, it was a, it was a nice surprise when yeah, he came nice out of the album. Needed to do a bit of BDI, I think though as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably, really. yeah. Yeah, I saw him live as BDI mm. in uh, the Isle of Wight. There I was doing that for Channel Four actually as well. Was it Channel Four? And. Uh, they were very good actually I thought they were quite yeah. good you know? they had it like uh, don't get me wrong like I like the, a few of their songs their their time as a whole I wouldn't deem as a major success oh, no, no but, sure, um, but we've we've touched on a couple of times already that you're obviously good friends with you two how how did that actually come about where did you first meet the lads it was just playing their demos yeah. uh, on the radio yeah they came in a few times for interviews in the early days had you met them prior to no. playing their no, 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 no! I only met them then, and then when they released the first single, it was a big deal for them. So we we'd started up in here, and for some reason, which is the weirdest thing of all, we let them come in five nights a week yeah. to let people decide. Yeah, the end which is mad. Fights. I mean, like, you'd never do that with a band now. And I don't yeah, know why we picked you too, because like I keep saying, I, I, at the launch of the single in um, in uh, Windmill Lane, I'd say there was about you know fifteen people there. Me and Ian Wilson were two of them. Uh, you know, like the bands like that should just go by Christmas. Yeah. You know? so, so, do you think that without without trying to sound too cocky, around, would you say that you're fairly responsible for no. their success? No, because you you said now that no. they they said I was there. Yeah, like do you you, you, you think were there, you but you, you any kind of a yeah, because you said no. But I mean, like if you're a band starting up, you got to get this, this, this in, in order. And I was the radio part of it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah maybe so. But yeah, because really. you said now if they didn't two months and they'd have been out the window. So like if it wasn't you, it might have been somebody else. But at the same time, you you probably yeah. could say that. You gave him the kickstart. No, but you know, your ducks have to all go in a row. I mean, Paul McGuinness would have done some very good things. Like, yeah. I remember meeting Bono once on Crafton Street. He says, uh, we're going to London. Every band went to London. I went, oh, God, you're not seriously going to do that. You'll break up within like a week, as, yeah. as they all do. And they were never really going to London at all. What they were was they were going to London to go boing straight to America. Just used it as a stepping stone. Yeah. I didn't realise that. I don't even know if Bono did, but Paul McGuinness did. Mm, and they were yeah. always like they were America from the word go, mm. and they really like they, mm, they break America. Slugged you've, away you've, in America, you've made it really, haven't you? Yeah. Like I was, I saw you two in Tulsa uh, about four weeks ago, and it was the first time there in thirty-five years. And there's a pub up the road where they played first to a thousand people, and in fact, there's a big. The wall is. Uh, the, the, they've put a big uh, frame on the wall where somebody had pushed their uh, Sid Vicious from Sex Pistols yeah. and pushed his fist to the wall and they made it into a kind of an art installation but like, that was a place called McCain's up the road and uh, like you know they really toured the shitholes of America because I tell you Tulsa is not exactly New York yeah, yeah, well no it's not quite no, where no, you're going to say no. things uh, just touch back on you, you mentioned the Isle of Wight Festival is there a favourite Irish festival for yourself? Well, I mean, festivals. What is it about festivals? It's just an adult's playground. It's just like... A George Byrne, one of the great Irish journalists who didn't t- pull, take any prisoners. He pulled no punches at all, hated everybody and gave out... He's absolutely obsessed with music. He said he wouldn't be caught dead at a festival. Really? Well, it's got nothing to do with music, he says, first of all. It's just people drinking in a field. Yeah. And, like, I'll give you an example. Like, you don't necessarily get treated very well. You're, you know, it's quite expensive. It turns out that the biggest queue on a Sunday morning of a three-day festival, you know well, is not the loo, it's not the showers, it's the ATM machine, because you never have enough money if you stay there three days. And it costs an absolute fortune. And, like, what do you get if it rains your effect, you know? And you don't really get much at all. And yet, if your head's right, you can enjoy it. And I've been to every single one, and I go to every single one all the time, and fine. But half the time, I wonder, like, this is not the way to see music. I kind of wait till the winter comes along. And I like the idea of having my tea at six o'clock, going out for a few pints, seeing a band, going out again, and then going to bed in my own bed. You know what I mean? I quite like that. What about glamping? Yeah, well, in fact, I had glamped once. Um, yeah, but no. Where, where did you glamp? Not the electric picnic. But I mean, I don't like it. I don't want to my do it. Really? Yeah. Right, yeah, right. Jeez, somebody else I know jumps over that wall as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I always enjoy festivals. I always give out about them. And then I say, what's my 20 best live gigs or something? And about 10 of them are at a festival. But the, the, it's all to do with, it's not to do with what's on or who's on. It's to do with your own head mm. or like, where you are with it, you know? For my side, you're not like, really. Gab, yeah, Gab and I is. booked uh, our tickets for Florence and the Machine in the Tree mm. Arena uh, yeah. in November. Now, that's somebody I wouldn't cross the road for, but go on. Fair enough. <laughs> now, bear in, 
my thing about it is like if you give me a choice of seeing her live in a tent in Stradbally or in the tree arena I'm going to pick uh, the field in Stradbally yeah, but that's yeah. not a personal yeah, thing yeah. if it was in Donegal if it was in Cork yeah I th- she's just better in a in an open setting, I think. But yeah, but festivals. There's something very odd about festivals. I just don't know what it is. Like, I mean, I wonder, no, I wonder if they burnt out. <laughs> Definitely, I wonder, that <laughs> I wonder if they all just kind of have we had enough of them? You know, I mean, even like uh, it does help to have a big headliner band, mm-hmm. and even now they, they and they don't have any headliner bands. Well, it's hip hop now people. that's dominating all the festivals. Yeah, which is kind of like EP. somebody plugs. Like, I mean, I saw um, Orbital. Doing the Belfast thing, the BBC Great Weekend mm. or whatever it's called yeah, last yeah. week. And it was just like two guys who are about 60 years of age standing on the thing doing this. And the whole thing is on tape anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I think the demographic for festivals is getting younger and younger. Oh, no question. Oh, yeah. Forbidden fruit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the East, oh, East, look East, at, East, look East at, uh, What do you call it? Marley Park. Yeah. I mean, you have to be four. Mm. Well, it seems like festivals are making a comeback now. There's... Uh, oh, all over. It's the first See, that, I think I think that's because of the younger generation. They, there's more buzz about it on social media because more and more younger yeah. people are going. Social like, media is an awful lot to do. Yeah, like yeah. I think, okay. like like you're what you can only you can be 16 going as long as you're now or something like that, can't you? Yeah, oh, as yeah, far as yeah. I know, I'm yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. Um. So I think Especially that's, that's what's Park making is it. The, the very young. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have gigs now, at Marley Park, Malahide, Trinity. Right. Yeah, Malahide is tonight. LCD Sound System. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you fan of them? Yeah, uh, you know, I don't get what everybody else gets, but I like them, yeah, yeah. I like some of the stuff. I wouldn't find them my favourites, but... Yeah, they, I like they they some, good some good stuff on the new album, yeah. that call the police and stuff, I like mm. I have a question relating to what we've hotly talked about, um, social media. So right. obviously you grew up in a time when... There was none. There was none? No. Do you prefer... There's none now in my life either, I don't really know anything about you it. You don't engage with it? Well, I have a son who's my social media roadie kind of thing. He comes to me every week and goes, okay, you better answer this, you better answer that. I don't know, I wouldn't have to do it. If I had to answer something on Twitter now, I have no idea how to do it. I think that's I'd, a great way to be. I've never mm-hmm. done Instagram, I don't know how to do any of that. I can send a photo. Mm-hmm. That's about as far as I can go, you know? But at the same, you probably, you probably don't need that at the same time, Dave, because you already have an established listener base anyway, so... Well, like, just, I mean, of course you need it. You need to use everything to... You need to keep it up, um, really. Yeah. Who, what? Yeah, you need to. You really do need to. You know, I just don't. Okay, um, okay. Now, Carl is here coming in. He's coming in a bit earlier than I thought. That's, right. That's okay. Like, on. do you have anything else? Uh, well, if you want to go somewhere else, you can go somewhere else. If you, yeah, if we will yeah. just pa- hit the pause button. Okay. Actually, right. I, I'm not even going to stop recording. I'm just going to take this. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? All right. I'll bring this chair back. Yes. In conversation on the road. On the road. Yeah, <laughs> we're moving. Who's coming in? Carl is just. He's. he's uh, the program is. Somewhere else, so he's got to do it. Oh, very good. Yeah. Carl, let's go. Who's where? Sorry, he's in Rat Minds. How's it going, Nancy? How's it going, They're in Rat Minds with some people. Yeah, so they were calling me air trying to do the lineup. Oh. So, sorry. Apologies. I was just, oh, don't I just, worry about it. I just mentioned Tulsa. I just talked about Tulsa. Oh, no way. He, he was with me in Tulsa. Oh, oh very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Find somewhere to go, do we? Yeah. Something. Just have to be a studio. Yeah, I need mean, like honestly, we're not fussy. We don't we can't afford to be fussy at this stage though. Um, there's nobody there. Yeah, let's go in there, come on. Okay, cool. Spot no studio. We'll just blame you if we get if somebody gives out to us. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh sure we'll pull up chairs here. This is grand. Yeah. Perfect. Uh famous studio in RT there. Well, I mean, we've only, like, this is not like this is a two XM studio or no, sorry, it's a it's gold and all that. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know what it is actually. And uh, I uh, shut the door behind you, sure. And I um, this is uh, but we only really have those two there, and they're very nice studios. The other one's mm. lovely. Uh, whereas the Radio One studios at the top of the corridor here are awful. <laughs> they're really cold. <laughs> well, they really are. They're terrible. Um, I was wondering, Dave, how many times have you entered Morrissey? Uh, Morrissey. In fact, I was in a lift once in Belfast, and I didn't look properly. It was, it was actually quite cool because I was with somebody, and we both got into the lift. We didn't look at the guy standing there, and we were going down. And we just hit the G. Well, the G button was already written on the ground floor, and we were going down. Mr. Fanning. <laughs> <laughs> didn't realise he was there or anything. And... Uh, I've interviewed him about twice only, maybe three times. Mm. He's another once, once in here and once in a hotel in town. Another person just from another planet, it seems. Yeah, he's not doing himself any favours lately. No, not lately. Well, he does an awful lot of things that aren't favours. Yeah. I mean, he's had about ten solo albums out now, and he'd never think of saying, 
try something different. Like yeah. get a famous DJ, an Avicii type, you know, that kind of thing, and go into a studio with somebody like that. Mm. You know, rather than have the same stodgy bar band you've had for 10 albums, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm, and what, yeah. did you, what did you make of the Smiths in general when they were... Again, around? the Smiths were doing their thing when I was like, you know, five nights of the week on the radio. They only lasted four years, 83 to 87. And uh, they were brilliant. Mm. They were different. And I was often quite amazed at just how absolutely people loved them. Yeah. I thought they were good and all that, mm. you know, and I could see they were different. But I wasn't... Well, it kind they, of was the worth of... They weren't my number one. Indie music as a genre, really. Ah, they weren't, they weren't. Before that was New Order and all mm. that, and Joy Division, they were there first, you know. But they were in the middle of it all. Yeah. 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 I have a question relating to your time with uh, Virgin. So oh, yeah. obviously, uh, did you have the pleasure or displeasure of meeting Richard Branson? Um, yeah, Richard Branson. Um, I, I, Richard Branson, um, I did a programme on Channel 4 mm -hmm. and it was live and I was in, uh, what do you call it, uh, the Nashville Ballroom, I think it was. Yeah, we, the programme was called Friday at the Dome and it was on every Friday Night Live. And one of the people, in fact, we had just done a thing with Massive Attack, one of my favourite bands. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time they were ever on television. And I thought it had gone really well, cause were, but I didn't realise something was wrong with the thing, because it was live. I went over to them and they were really annoyed because it had gone badly. And I was going, brilliant, lads. I, you can only hear what you hear, yeah. monitor-wise. Anyway, and then I had to go up on this balcony and sit down and talk to Richard Branson. Because Branson had brought Lenny Kravitz over from Paris and he'd been partying with Mick Jagger the night before. <laughs> and he said, listen, look, he's done two numbers, but he might be able to do the fast one, he might break down. And uh, as it turned out, he did break down doing the fast one, which is pathetic. It was all staged, I think. But he had a number one album at the time, and he was big. So we had to bring in, Richard Brown said he'd do an interview and explain what's wrong with Lenny, because was, was, Lenny was on Virgin Records and he was doing Virgin. So we did an interview with Richard Branson. It was very funny, because the guys in charge were freaking out, like, oh, Branson's going to do a live interview. Are you all right there, Davis? Look, fuck, it's not a rock star. It doesn't matter. And I had to finish when he was finished and say, right, here he is down on the stage now, Robert Palmer. Uh, you know, you, you, might, you might know Robert Palmer, but um, famous videos for a uh, good-looking, suave guy who had four women behind playing bass guitars and stuff who looked like all um, supermodels. Might as well face it, you're addicted to love, all that stuff. No, anyway. Uh, so he was playing. That's why I had to say that. And your man Branson at the end of it said, jeez, you know, that was pretty good. It was a press kind of thing because he was trying to be funny and trying to be smart. And you know, he was asking me how I flew over from Dublin. Hmm. And the guy was going five, four, three. I said, uh, Erling, you can go virgin. I'm not going to talk to you. This kind of stuff. Anyway, so we did it all. Now. So then he rang me about a year later and I said, Will you join this new thing I'm doing, which is uh, a radio? And I said, Yeah, okay, maybe we'll. All right. So he was on a thing called Kenny Live on RT. He was over in Ireland doing some golf charity thing. And Kenny loves Pat Kenny chat show on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And he even said, yes, well, I poached one of your friends, uh, Dave Fanning. I'm going, so I'm definitely doing it now. So, um, yeah, I did it for three years. And uh, it was great fun. Because it was Chris Evans was 10 to 2 uh, on a Saturday morning. And I was 2 to 6 on a Saturday afternoon. Um, a shift now on radio. Yeah, simple. You know, just playing great music. It's got yeah. anybody to do it. And, uh, yeah, so it was good to do. I enjoyed doing that. One golden square in London. And Branson himself, is it someone that you'd like to sit down and have a pint with, or is it someone you'd say? I never did. Uh, I'm uh, busy. I did meet him. I had to go to meet him in Dublin. He was um, doing another golf thing in Port Marnock, mm -hmm. and uh, his mother was playing. His mother, like, is about ninety three and looked about forty, and uh, I don't know what it was all about. But I had to meet him there, okay. and I did. I never had a pint with him. I think I had a cup of coffee standing there, all right, but. Uh, I've never met him since or anything. I don't oh. know if you've ever... I mean, I met him at the launch of Virgin in London. It was a big scene of paparazzi kind okay. of vibes. And I was one of the people, so we are on a stage in some place they took over. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't know him, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't actually delved into film, Dave. Is there directors or films that of recent that you'd be fond of? Or? God, I mean, I'd love to see a list. That's what I need to see, because mm -hmm. I can never think of anything. You know? Yeah. Uh, like, I'm not going to start going on for hours about Christopher Nolan and all these kind of things mm. that the people do all the time. Or, um, no, not necessarily. And I do have a fear of people when they say, like, um, when they say things like that, like, you know, instead of saying, well, I saw Batman, I saw Christopher Nolan's Batman, they always have to mention the director. I, yeah. always, I always avoid people like that. <laughs> um, but no, I can't think of... What have I seen? Even I mean, I saw a weird movie recently called Bomb City, which nobody's seen. I thought it was fantastic. That, no. no, nobody has. I thought it was brilliant. It's a true story set in, um, is it San Antonio or somewhere in Texas about a kind of a 
uh, uh, I don't know, punks and jocks and the killing of one of them. Mm. Uh, it's really good. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Like, I watch, like the box set thing has opened up everything for me. Yeah, well. yeah. I absolutely love it. And I'm like, I get lost in stuff and I have a lot of free time at the moment. And the last few years, I really do watch mm. an awful lot. And I watch crap. Yeah, would you be a binge watcher at all? Or? Yeah, yeah, big time. Netflix, yeah. Amazon Prime. Funny enough, binge watch. I'm I'm watching a thing at the moment. Netflix, which a few people have mentioned. Seven seconds. Uh, I've seen seven of them now. The three to go. It's it's good actually. It's very good. But uh, yeah, I watch a lot of stuff. An mm. awful lot of stuff. Too uh, much. Just like the, I think I've noticed just the media landscape now. You know, when you grew up. You go to the cinema, you see a movie, and that'll be it. Yeah. But now you can just your Netflix. You oh yeah, it's not that it's any movie. better now, though. No. So I'll give you like the example that I'd use probably would be there was a magazine called The Word, which like I you bought all the music magazines obviously down through the years. But there was a magazine called The Word a few years ago, which only lasted for a while. And in fact, Mark Ellen and all those who started all the smash hits and empires and all those magazines and Q. They started this one, and it's absolutely was the best of all the magazines. It just got the tone just right of the old and the new and all that. But it didn't last long. It must have lasted about four years, I don't know. And there was an article in it about a guy on a train, and he's a journalist writing. And he said he got a text from one of his friends saying, you've got to listen to blah, 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 blah. And within 60 seconds, he was able to get it on his phone. Mm. Now, I just think that's terrible. Yeah, that's just not the way it should be you should work in the factory or work in the office get your money get the bus into town hand a thing over called money get a thing back called a thing mm, be it a record copy, yeah. go home and stick the needle in it or put it into a CD mm. machine even or whatever you need to like the journey is gone now it's yeah. like the Star Trek thing where you just stand in this little dot here and you're suddenly in Turkey You've I think at your the magic bus to Turkey is really what it's all about so I don't really you can't appreciate it in the same way no. and people don't listen to music the way they used to people don't like music the way they used to people don't need music the way they used to they don't want it it's, music is used now for something completely different yeah. and I wouldn't be a fan because people who listen to music now don't know what it used to be which is you put it into a needle and inject the damn vinyl into yeah. your bloodstream funny you say that for for Christmas I actually got my dad a record player and then for his birthday I bought him uh, Wish You Were Here yeah. and Dark Side of the Moon yeah. and he says he loves it it just takes him back yeah but I mean it's not the question it's not for nostalgia purposes that I'm talking about it's just that but he just says that the sound of it is well the sound of it is, is one thing it is yeah. definitely better there's mm. no question about that but even that's not what it's about it's just about uh, people don't need music like they used to need it and also I'll give you look there's a generation that have grown up maybe two that expects to get music for free they get music for free, so therefore don't tell me music hasn't been devalued. It has. It doesn't. It's not worth anything anymore. It used to be life. It used to be the only, like we used to get this uh, job you could do at Christmas as a student uh, with the postman, and like you know the post, there was so much post. Obviously there isn't as much now with emails and all that, but there was loads of post around, and like you know you get a student in to help with all the Christmas post and all that. And, you'd do. and I remember getting two extra days and that meant one extra album that I could buy. Mm. And it was the biggest thing ever, you know. Mm. Now you do get everything free and I do have a thing at home where anybody mentions an album or I read a review, there it is, I just listen to it. First album you bought yourself? Uh, the first album I actually paid for. Yeah. Which is not the same thing. I, I would have got more before that but I didn't need to because my brothers bought them and I wouldn't have had any money. We just wouldn't have had the money to buy it. But the one I actually paid for, and it's got a terrible long story, so I won't, is actually probably the most famous rock album of all time, and I paid for it, which is Sgt. Pepper's by the Beatles, because I put money in January uh, in the shop in Stalorgan and Golden Discs. I put a tenner on, and it wasn't out till June. I knew it wasn't coming out till June. It was like a deposit on the yeah. album. It would have been 30... Pre-order. Yeah, 30, 30 bob, which is like, I don't know, whatever. So I put 10 bob on. Mm. and therefore had another 20 to try and get together in the next few months to put that on too but that's what you have to do I mean it's just so impossible for anybody to understand you know it just really is and then having albums and album collections and selling them or swapping them and all that kind of thing it's just huge it's all dead now obviously everything is dead now like the whole idea of music is just yeah, she can get any song you've ever but it's not, yeah but it's not even that like even radio stations like there was no radio station growing up except Radio Luxembourg and BBC Radio 1 when I was doing it. And even then you had to get a transistor and put it this way to try and get something out of it. Now there's like, I mean, there's 46 official stations in Ireland that do pop music and there's only 26 counties. It's yeah. insane. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. So it's taken away a lot of, I don't know, the whatever of it. Mm. Speaking of albums, um, you found the Arctic Monkeys at all? 
Uh, I hate the new album. Yeah, I was oh, going to ask about it. God, I can't stand it. I don't get it at all. I think your man, Alex Turner, whatever his name is, is trying to is starting to believe that he maybe he is a spokesperson for something at the moment. Yeah. And he's gone all the way with the spokespersonness and completely mm. forgot about the music. Uh, well, it's a different kind of music anyway, this one. Yeah. I just don't totally get it. I mean, I liked, you know, obviously the thing from 12 years ago, the first one. Yeah. Whoever people say I am, and the bits and pieces after that. Mm. But I wouldn't, like, I mean, I'll go and see them. I've seen them before, yeah. and I do like them. But do I love them? No. Yeah. Well, I think the new album is they've gone from it's very different, you know, in the shed, you know, uh, yeah. creating rock music to lounge space seventies. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's, it's odd. odd. Is that a good thing? I don't know. That's the thing. Is it a good thing? Yeah, see, like Noel Gallagher did a very similar thing as well when he brought out um, his la- his latest album. People were quick to judge it because it's not what they were used to. It's not your typical no Yeah, it's not, it's not that I'm looking for something that I'm used to. Jeez, yeah. the amount of bands that have done complete about turns and I love the about turn wherever they went, you know? Yeah. I mean, Beck has done the about turn in every single album. Mm. Yeah. I went to see him last week, I thought he was shite. Yeah. But there you go, you know, I still like the albums. You know, in fact, yeah. of his 13 or 14 albums, it's his 12th that I like the most, Morning Phase. So, like, it's all... But like I mean, also the age you are, and like whoever, like whatever you are between sixteen and twenty-two is usually what defines everything in terms of albums. And a bit younger than that is what defines, you know, pop. Well, Gregor past that, so what defines? I you am now? past that, yeah. What uh, defines you now? What defines me? Well, you well you won't know for another ten years. Do you you, 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 you realise the things that happened at seventeen is still the biggest thing. Well, I, I'm I'm hitting the twenty-five mark now next year. This year, this September, year. Yeah. September, yeah. Uh, yeah, catching up. I'm gonna have to take stock now. Um, but like, yeah, I'm gonna be over the hill. I don't I don't see my music taste changing. Yeah, drastically. Um, I think it's probably gonna stay stuff like two door. Yeah, like so it's gonna it's gonna be the same. I think. Yeah. Um, easy listening is my thing. E- yeah, easy listening is. Yeah. Uh, Dave, I have a question for you. Um, so obviously the majority of your radio career has been spent as a late night DJ what 34 years as a nighttime DJ yeah was I yeah probably yeah mostly yeah yeah not well no it was late night at first that okay. was Pirates and Here and then then it was 8 o'clock at night which I never okay. felt was as that, that late because the audience goes right down the later you are um, yeah but for the last 12 or 13 years mm-hmm. 15 years it's been all over the place different yeah. times so how do you find your, your slot now on a Saturday and Sunday morning well, I'd much rather be doing what I'm doing this now because I mean I wanted to stop doing the music mm-hmm. when I realised that it's all it's all changing too much, and people don't really need somebody to help them along with what they're listening to, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I really pushed a long time for talkie radio by about 2001, 2002, and then got it at that time, mm-hmm. and that's all I've been doing now since. Also, I don't really know from my point of view if there's much of a future in doing music on radio. There's so much of it about. Mm. Like, there's about 15 different rock shows you can tune into at night now on the radio. Yeah. Everybody's doing it. And it's not, that wasn't the way without it. Because the aforementioned availability like of music, how many saturated. people are actually listening well, to that's radio? The point. To yeah. You wouldn't believe the tiny figures at night now. Yeah, I'd say and so. like we had huge figures again, not because we were great. Luckily for us, we can't actually tell when we're live who's yeah. listening. Because <laughs> college, college radio would get, you get a few of your mates listening in, I'd say. But, uh, well, like if we get the mics to work half the time, we're doing yeah. well. Well, yeah. Yeah, there's always those things. All right, but it's just, well, I don't know, you know. I, 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 the way to stay alive is to try and do some kind of And have you magazine. found yourself having to maybe adapt with the times over the years? No, or? I find that very easy to do. I, yeah, I did Jerry Ryan's programme, stood in for that a load of years, mm-hmm. for about 20 years when he went on holidays and all that. And so I was well used to it by the time I started to do it. Um, but I'd like to be doing other stuff now. Okay. Like I'd like to be doing what I'm doing on uh, Radio 1. I don't want to be on 2 of them anymore. But I can't... I, I can't move over that easily it's just there's no okay. availability as such and like you've like we said already you've, you've pretty much done all radio film critic TV show host all that what's been your favourite is it is radio your oh, yeah. your go to all the time oh, yeah I mean like the night time in the 80s was the greatest thing ever yeah and uh, I like now magazine if I was on Radio 1 doing it I'd say I'd probably say that would be just as good but I'm not I'm on 2FM which is not just as good I'd rather be on Radio 1 but, is 2FM uh, just a little brother kind of thing? No, it's not it? that. It's just, I'm in the wrong place. It just doesn't fit. I mean, like, but the rest of the station, what is it doing there? I mean, it sticks out like a sore thumb. That's not always a bad idea. And uh, I'm quite happy to do, to focus on older people even. Like, you know, I'll have Roger Waters or I'll have, um, what's his name, uh, Billy Joel in the next few weeks. What's that doing on 2FM, you know? Yeah, exactly. Ridiculous. That's, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But I, I quite like that in one way. That's yeah, what, that's, that's one yeah like. makes you stand out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you need actually. And even you know, it might, the thumb might be sore, but at least it's standing out. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so Dave, before we wrap up, uh, we usually ask people of influence who we interview, um, any advice besides, you know, you know, getting the lucky break? That's, what's, who, who is this? Um, Pharrell, that's it. Get lucky. <laughs> that's all, I mean, really. Get lucky. And we'll I work on that. <laughs> I don't know if that means making your own luck, but get lucky, because it really is. It's all about luck. It's yeah. not about anything else. There's a million people out there who can do exactly what I've been doing, and I got lucky. I mean, some people would say, I'm not lucky. They'd rather work in a cubicle in an office as an architect for 40 yeah. years. I wouldn't. That's what I was, like, I was thinking. Like, the way, what we do now with our interview radio show, literally anybody, in, like we, there's a hundred and something in our course, any three of them could have gotten together and do what we're doing right oh, now. Oh, yeah. We were actually uh, paired together randomly. Yeah. Right. And uh, unfortunately, we're still stuck here. Stuck so yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, really, I don't think, I don't, like, there's nothing else. Also, you know, um, it helps, although I didn't, I, I knew nobody, but I do know people who are in doing things because they knew somebody. And don't ever let that go. Like, if, you know, if, 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 you're, if your dad owns a tiny garage that fixes cars in the back of the thing, the most likely person to get that job there if they want the job is your son. You know, mm. you have to, you know, if you're a billionaire, yeah. you know, they can open doors for you too, you know, get you good education and all the rest, you know. So whoever you know, or, you know, always use them. I mean, I just think, you know, like most people got there not from the letters after their names, but from who they knew or from starting out. I mean, I know at least two people, a good friend of mine who I'll be going to Nick Cavett now tomorrow, he's a lot younger than me. And he came into the movie show making coffee. And we didn't want coffee. But it was somebody's friend of somebody's father of something. So, oh, God, let him make some coffee. So we're all just drinking coffee. We didn't even want it. And now he's just won about his third award for sports documentaries that he's done around the world. He's in, he knows nothing about sports. So, Dave, will you go fetch Sting and we'll uh, just... Sting's gone, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sting has flown. Uh, I don't know where he's gone. Uh, I th- actually, I think he might have gone to News Talk. I don't know. But anyway, he's, uh, he's, gonna, he's doing a couple of interviews today. For that play of his, the last yeah. ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave just rolled his eyes. Um, yeah. No, I mean, like, <laughs> like, good luck to him. It's brilliant. All the things he does, like, fantastic. Like, it's not totally my cup of tea, you know. But there mm. you go. Yeah. Like, I've interviewed a thousand people. It's not my cup of tea, but I understand that they're very good at what they do. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, I think I'll wrap it up. Um, very good. This has been Gavin and Colin yeah. and Greg. With in conversation with with Dave Fanning. Thanks very much, Dave. Thank you very Come much, on. guys. Been live a pleasure. more tea. Live yeah. more tea, and we'll see. Oh, it's not going to be live. Yeah, it's not going to be live. Yeah, <laughs> we'll fix it in post. It's grand. See you That's next what time. They all say.